miss a bird. So, should we go for that? Sure. Yeah, great. Hi, everybody. Our next talk is about uh, the Godot engine, and our, our speaker is Remy Verschelde. Please give him a warm welcome. Turn it on. Thank you. I will talk to you about uh, the Godot game engine, which is a 2D and 3D open source game engine. And uh, yes, the name comes from the famous play by Samuel Beckett, hence the jokes that you will hear all the time about Godot. And first of all, what is Godot? Uh, so it's a multi-platform 2D and 3D game engine, which uh, can be used to create any kind of game genre. And you can then export it to uh, all desktop platforms, uh, mobile, Android, iOS, and the web. It uses um, domain-specific uh, language, which is called GDScript, which is inspired from Python, but doesn't share anything about uh, like, uh, how it's implemented. And we also offer, since the new version, uh, C-sharp support. And it's a full feature editor, so I don't know if you know some proprietary game engines which are used uh, in the market, like Unity or Unreal. Uh, it's quite similar. So you code your, ng your game in the editor, and you like put some pieces together to create logic, and um, that in the end you export your game and get a binary and uh, a data pack. And of course, it's free and open source uh, under the MIT license. So quickly, some history of the project. Um, so it was created, it was started in 2007 and open source in 2014. Before that, it was an in-house engine by uh, Juan Linetsky, uh, the guy here. And um, <laughs> Ariel uh, Manso, which are both uh, from Argentina. And uh, so it was in published as free and open source in 2014. And that was a good decision because it experienced a massive growth since then. Uh, you can see on the graph here, it's a bit outdated because uh, I just translated an old presentation in German for today. Uh, but um, so at the open sourcing, in blue, it's the number of issues we get each month created on GitHub, and it read the number of pull requests. And you can see that lately it's going very higher. Uh, the, pa the peaks are on bit before releases. And uh, if I had updated the, the image, you would see that for 3.0, it's about here. We got 700 pull requests uh, in, de in December. And uh, so we have over 450 contributors, and our last release was last week. Um, that's why I haven't prepared new updated presentation, because I had no time at all. Uh, but it's been worked on for 18 months. It's, I would say, pretty impressive. I will talk a bit more about it later. Um, Godot is made for and by its community. Uh, so all the source code and documentation demo projects are available on GitHub. And we get, in average, like 15 pull requests per day. Uh, so that's very active uh, for a free and open source project. And we have communities everywhere because it's community driven. So people just create communities in whatever platform they like. So we have people on IRC. Um, we have our own Q&A uh, metrics, Facebook, Discord, Reddit, forums, and even, even more than that. Here are some examples of Godot games. So I don't know if you see the colors well. Uh, the contrast is not so good. But um, yeah, there are some 2D games. Uh, so that's for PC and uh, that's for um, mobile. That's an open source game, which is for PC and mobile. That's an upcoming 3D game with Godot 3. That's not seeable, but that's a 2D game, which was uh, the winner of the GitHub Game of Game Jam uh, this year, uh, in 2017. And that's also uh, a rendering in our new engine. So, yeah, quickly Godot in the free and open source ecosystem and in the game dev industry. Um, you all know that there are op open source engines, game engines, what we used to call game engines in the past, like Augur or SDL2, which nowadays, due to how game engines are used to represent those massive editor-based tools. We now would say SDL2 is more a library, a framework. So in the open source world, we have very good frameworks, uh, libgtx in Java, phaser in JS, Fonda3 in Python, some libraries, but no real big 
game engine that can concurrence those ones until Godot. So that's, uh, that's our position. And there are some other open source game engines that are quite interesting. But I think uh, Godot is the biggest one and the, fast, the one which grows the fastest. So the strength of Godot is um, it's very flexible scene system. So you create your whole game based on uh, nodes that you pack together and create scenes. And then you can instance those scenes in other scenes. So in the end, um, has, uh, and Tim Sweeney liked it, the comparison that Godot is a biggest, uh, Unity is a biggest scene where you put your prefabs and stuff like that. And Godot is a tree of scenes that go back to the root. So um, you have tons of nodes which can be used for a variety of use cases. So sprites, um, audio players, kinematic characters, everything. So you just put ready-made elements with their own API, and then you can use them to create your game. Or you can create your own by make inheriting from the scenes that you created. Everything can be animated, so that's quite nice, because anything that has a property, you can animate this property. So you can move stuff, but you can like um, do stuff which is different than just visual uh, changes. So you can also alter properties like decide to play a sound or decide to stop an animation and stuff like that. It has its own full feature UE toolkit to create uh, so the GUIs in your games and the Godot editor itself uses it. So Godot runs on Godot. It doesn't use Qt or JTK or anything. It's full, uh, full custom so that means we had to create a pretty decent toolkit so that we have a good editor and everything from this toolkit is available for your own games. It uses a simplified shader, shader language, uh, uh, which is based on GLSL, but simplifies some of the tasks that you have to do in GLSL to use directly built-in features of the engine. It's very friendly to version control. Uh, so we have uh, text-based uh, formats, uh, mainly uh, TSCN, text scene, which is similar to uh, the TOML uh, spec. <coughs> and that's quite nice when you want to use uh, Git or Mercurial or stuff like that, because um, yeah, you can see exactly what changed. And it is much easier to fix merge conflicts when you work with other people on your project. And we have a fully free and open source software asset library. So unlike other engines, which have asset stores with tons of paid assets where you can use to make asset flippers and sell on Steam. We only have free and open source tools. Uh, so that's a limitation that we chose because it's much simpler to handle. And also because we want to promote making open source tools. And I mentioned it, we released Godot 3 um, last week on Monday, uh, this week on Monday. And uh, yeah, the pen is bad, but it's literally a game changer. It comes with physically based rendering with global illumination. So in TechSpeak, that's uh, state of the art uh, rendering uh, features, such as you will find in uh, Blender's upcoming uh, EV renderer, everything real time. Uh, the new version brings uh, support for C Sharp because uh, many users requested it over the years, uh, partly because that's what they were familiar with or because they did not like dynamic, dynamically typed languages like GDScript. So we added C Sharp. New high-level multiplayer API, bullet physics for 3D. Support for VR. Uh, there are still some more work to implement, but the initial support is there to use uh, OpenVR. And we have a nice new feature, which is GD Native, which allows you to use native code as scripts in your game. So you can basically compile your own library in C, C++, or using some bindings with uh, D, Nim, uh, Python, I forget one maybe, no, that's good. And uh, you can use it directly in Godot without having to uh, recompile the engine or compile a module. So you can just plug in your code. And that was, yeah, 18 months of work. So uh, we are very happy to finally release it. The response so far is awesome. So I will hope you will also give it a try and like it. You can see here, uh, that's also not so visible, at least from where I am, but uh, that's a 3D render of an upcoming game uh, by one of our contributors, which has some pretty nice uh, 3D effects 
you can find the presentation slides later on if you want to check uh, the pictures. Some more pictures about Godot 3, uh, the good old sponsor, some of the assets uh, that we found uh, on the internet to test our renderer. That's custom made assets uh, with the Godot logo. You can see this demo at our stand. Some more pictures about uh, features in Godot, so refractions, which allows here, for example, to make very nice uh, ice effects, anisotropy for stuff like aluminum, subsurface scattering for skin, rim for nice effects on this teddy bear. And that's global illumination, that's uh, showing everything here. There is no light added, it's only emit emitted material. So this stuff is just white balls with a high coefficient of emission and it lights the whole scene. And yes, you can find more infos on our website, the address for the source code repository, the documentation, IRC channel if you want to discuss uh, with the developers. We are mostly old, bearded, free software developers, so we are on IRC. But as I mentioned, there are also many other <coughs> cooler communities nowadays uh, where we are also. And you can come see us at our first demo booth. We're in building K uh, on uh, level two. So when you come from here, it's like directly on the right instead of going to the distro level. We are the first stand when you enter. And that's it. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, we'd gladly try to answer them. Ah, yes, uh, we have the Go.con on Monday and Tuesday uh, in Brussels. So if you are from the area uh, or plan to stay a bit longer, you are welcome to join us. It's like for them, free entry. Um, it will be at uh, the Ludus Academy, which is Game Dev School in Brussels. Uh, you'll find, you can find all information on our website or come to our stand and ask us. You are very welcome to join us. So I will ask Ram to come for questions. Help me a bit with the technical stuff because I'm just project manager and not a high level coder. But, uh, so if you have questions, please speak very loud, and I will repeat them. How the new physically based rendering performance uh, on mobile devices, is it uh, usable? OK, so the question is, what, how is the, new, um, perf the performance of the new physically based renderer on mobile devices? Oh, OK. Uh, the physically based part is fine, because it's not very much. The global illumination uh, system we use in O3, uh, the main one is real time. Uh, and that will not work on mobile devices, but you can do a light, light map making, which is what you usually do for such devices. And yeah, so to, ex to say it otherwise, the performance is bad on mobile devices. That's why for Godot 3.1, uh -huh. which comes in a couple, two or three months, we will re-add a renderer based on GLES 2 um, with a subset of those PBR features supported and no GI, no global illumination so that you can run Godot games um, on like, um, low-range low and mid-range uh, devices. Yes? Um, can you deploy to embedded devices, e.g. a Raspberry Pi, and if so, in general, like what graphics stack do you guys use? If it supports OpenGL, so the, the question sure. was, uh, can you de export on embedded, embedded devices like uh, Raspberry Pi, and how is the rendering stack? If it supports OpenGL, it should work fine. I think there are ports of it to Raspberry Pi. Yeah, uh, for, for Godot 3, not yet. Uh, but for Godot, 3, for Godot 2, uh, I know someone who exported to Raspberry Pi. He just basically had to compile our X11 platform. The performance <coughs> seems to be to good from ARM, and it worked. Yes? Uh, concerning Mono, is it by default uh, language script? Or can we use uh, uh, the. Uh, yeah, so the question is uh, is uh, Mono C Sharp the new default language uh, script, scripting language, or can you still use uh, the previous one? So, yeah, we added Mono as an add on, but we still keep our own language, uh, GD script. We continue to believe that it's a really good language, um, at least for. Uh, people who are learning Godot, it's really nice because you can catch it in a few hours if you have some programming experience and be efficient very quickly. And uh, Mono actually comes in a different binary because we don't want to bloat the default engine with the need to have the Mono SDK installed on uh, your system. Uh, 
So we offer both mono and classical versions.